but it's not really the LDL that's driving the bus. But I will agree with you, Paul, the LDL people love FH because it's a simple and untrue message. Oh, they have higher LDL and that's why they have problems, you know? And I love that you highlighted this, the risk multipliers that you cite, hypertension, low HDL, these are indicators of insulin resistance, <laughs> insulin resistance. And this, this, this theme comes through in your book and I love this. And this is something that I talk about in my book coming out next month. I wrote a whole chapter on LDL and, and we collaborated on a graphic that I used in the book. So thank you for that. And the, um, the, the take home message here for people, which we will continue to elaborate on in this podcast is that LDL cannot be interpreted in a vacuum. If we really look at the studies, it's not clear that there's a linear directly correlated relationship between LDL level and the incidence of coronary disease. There's another risk multiplier the context is everything, and that context is insulin resistance. And we can see that. One of the studies that you shared with me that I put in the book was this Framingham study. And in the Framingham study, they looked at LDL, levels of LDL versus incidence or relative risk of cardiovascular disease. And if you take the population in the Framingham study, which is a large epidemiology study from Northeastern United States, as a whole, there is a relationship between LDL and cardiovascular disease. But if you break that cohort down by HDL, right? If you break it down by HDL and you take one line, it's the same data, and you separate it into four lines, what you find is that the people with the highest level of HDL, presumably people who have an indication of insulin sensitivity, have essentially no correlation between LDL and cardiovascular disease, while those with high HDL, or excuse me, low HDL, have a curve that's much steeper, and there is a very good correlation between LDL and cardiovascular disease. So I think what Ivor and I are saying is not that LDL is not involved in atherosclerosis, but mm -hmm. it is not initiating it, and it is not the only factor. As you suggest, LDL is playing a role. I think LDL gets wrapped up in the ball of wax. You know, LDL gets pulled yeah. into the, to the melee. And so in people who are insulin resistant, if you have more LDL, you may have more fuel for the fire, but it's the insulin resistance that provide, that is the total overarching context. And I believe it's the insulin resistance that is the spark that burns the, the wood. You know, you can store a bunch of wood in your garage. It's not gonna spontaneously combust unless lightning hits it. And that lightning strike is the insulin resistance. And so I think in some people with uh, familial hypercholesterolemia or some people with higher LDL, if they have that spark, man, that, that LDL can go up in a blaze and it can become, you know, aggressive atherosclerosis. But without the initiating event, which is, I think most listeners will understand, is the most important piece of this equation, the LDL is just there doing its job, which is valuable, right? Yeah, and that's a great straightforward analogy to it, the fuel for the fire. And you know what? There's insulin resistance is a huge problem and whatever drives it. But then there's other inflammatory conditions and they all center on the endothelium, the inner layer of the artery. Is that healthy or not? And if you don't have inflammation or damage to the endothelium and your arteries are inherently healthy pipes, then the LDL, as you say, falls away to irrelevance. But if you do have a problem with inflammation, insulin resistance, or, or there's a bunch of even arthritis and AIDS. There's a lot of problems that lead to vascular distress. And then for those people, having a higher LDL may complicate it, make things worse. But in an engineering sense, they're not the real root cause, or the LDL is not the real root cause. It's an interacting peripheral variable. The real root causes are what offend the artery.